Hey, what's going on, guys? It's Brian Jack with Simmons Comics, and we're here to kick off that comic week with you with that top 10 back issue list to be on the lookout for. This is a special champions theme checklist this week, isn't it, Jack? That's right. You guys know that we've been talking about this on the Bolo Show. We've been talking about this on Three Up, Three Down. You've heard our long-term plays. Um, we are big believers in the champions, and we have seen in the market that so are you guys. But there's a lot that's getting overlooked, and that's kind of the beauty of this buy list. Is This isn't the top 10 hottest comics of the week. Um, if that was the case, we'd be talking Miles Morales and Kamala Khan if we're talking champions, but those are not the characters we are going to talk about today. We're getting into it right now, starting with number 10. Coming at the bottom of the list this week at number 10, we get the Ultimate Comics Spider-Man number 2. And now this is the first appearance of the character Bombshell, who, now this is kind of tricky because of course a lot of the speculation with champions has to do with uh, Disney Plus, movies, and so on and so forth. And of course this is going to take place within the Spider-Man universe. Could cause some complications there. Sony's been willing to play ball, and either way, even if they haven't, this could be a character that they could use because they have seen a lot of interest in using young female characters, but Bombshell is a character who has been featured in the new uh, 2020 uh, volume, uh, I think, four or volume five series, uh, number one issue right front and center on some of the covers. I think she's going to be an important member of the team kind of going forward. Uh, and because of that, I think that this first appearance is one that I don't hear anyone talking about. I think it's completely overlooked. And I, I take a lot of stock in the fact that the some of these characters are put uh, on covers and kind of show there's the champions can be a large team, right? There can often be as many as 10 members of a team, but there's usually about four or five that get like cover feature and uh, bombshell getting that uh, it kind of shows me that this may be a bigger character than people are paying attention to. Leading us into the next spot here at number nine this week, we get that champions volume two, number nine, which is also going to tie into our number eight as well. Right. That's right, because first off at number nine, like you mentioned, we are going to talk about Champions Volume 2, number nine, which is the first appearance of the Red Locust. Now, Red Locust is a very, very important member of the Champions team, one of the main team members, also um, a character of uh, Mexican descent who has kind of gotten a lot of popularity due to the fact that it was created by superstar Marvel artist um, and another creator of Mexican descent, Humberto Ramos. Uh, now, there's been a lot of changes, and that can cause maybe first appearance controversy, which is why we have to have two entries for this one character. Um, the character was originally introduced as Fernando Ramirez in Champions Volume 2, number 9, um, but the creator, Humberto Ramirez, requested that her surname be changed uh, from Ramirez to Rodriguez, and the adjective uh, dropped from her alias. So Red was taken out of her alias, and the name uh, was changed to uh, the Locust. And this happened in Champions Volume 3, number one in 2019. So that's why we've got both of these entries. I know that people will probably, if this character became extremely popular, there would be arguments about, well, Red Locust isn't the Locust and this, that, and the third. But in reality, this is just a kind of like uh, publishing sort of change that happened. Time will tell which one of these is really looked at as the first appearance. We've advocated buying all the champions number ones um, already, but I would say I would grab both of these. That's always been our stance. They're, they're cover price books. Don't play comics politics. Um, have yourself covered. The interesting thing about this as far as like Marvel Comics lore and history is Champions Volume 2, number 9, where the character appears as Red Locust, was actually changed in subsequent printings of the trade. So the only place where she appears as Fernanda Ramirez versus Rodriguez is actually in the first print floppy that was released in 2017. The great thing is, in addition to all of that locust, red locust kind of mumbo jumbo, even if that isn't enough to get you excited about Champions Volume 3, number one from 2019, there's another first appearance in this issue because that's when Miss Marvel takes the lead as the champions and she decides that the champions needs to have a more global approach. And she reaches all the way out to New Delhi for a brand new member, um, a teleporter who can bring the team members anywhere on the earth in an instant um, and that is the character of pinpoint who is i'm gonna mispronounce this name and i apologize but koreshi uh, gupta uh, and 
this is again a, gr a great first appearance that nobody's really paying attention to. You kind of get a two for one here, uh, and it only adds more credence to why this book is popular. Coming in next on the list at that number seven spot, we get Champions Volume Two, Number One. Yeah, we're talking about a lot of volumes and a lot of number ones, and it can get confusing, but Champions originally created in the 70s was a completely different book. It featured Hulk and Thing and featured ma major Marvel characters. And in 2017, this team was rebranded as kind of a Teen Titans, a young uh, upstart team featuring Miles Morales and Sam Alexander Nova and uh, Riri Williams and, uh, you know, the kids Cyclops and all of these great characters. And this is really where all of this began. And Marvel has clearly, clearly found something here because they've released a few more miniseries. They're, they've done crossovers, tie-ins. It's These characters are heavily involved in their corporate marketing. Um, I think this is something to pay attention to. And again, a very cheap book, book under the radar. There's incentive variants for it. There's exclusive variants for it. Um, and there were a lot of exclusive variants that totally got overlooked. Uh, even like Midtown Comics did a J. Scott Campbell variant, which sells for literally nothing. So, Art germ variants. Yeah. Be, yeah. I, I've, I've been grabbing up these books for a long time. They're ones that I would be on the lookout for, for sure. Then hit us in the sixth spot this week. We get Champions Volume 2. This is issue number 19. Yeah, now this is one that a lot of people were on top of when this series came out because this is, of course, the first appearance of Snowguard, um, who is a Inyuk uh, character from Canada, which is uh, essentially what us uh, lesser class people would have called Eskimos back in the day. Um, so, again, this is kind of the, the beauty of um, the diversity within champions that it's, it's very organic that this young team also is pulling from all these different areas in the world. And it's more than just diversity. It's, it's really globalism because you're getting to see characters from Canada. And we just talked about new Delhi, um, and all these different Mexico and different points of perspective and also bringing powers from their, uh, kind of homelands into this team, uh, which is obviously, you know, when we're talking about protecting the world, we're not protecting just this country, we're protecting the, the world as a whole. So this is a character that was po very popular. Um, snow characters have always kind of had like niche popularity, but aren't real prevalent. So um, this character was so popular that she didn't just take up one entry on this list, Brian, she took up two. Yeah, and then coming at that number five spot, we get that Champions Volume 2 still, but we're getting a twofer with issues number 19 and 20, but we're talking about that second print cover for number 20, right? Yeah, it, issue 19 was so popular. I mean, halfway through kind of a run, suddenly there was this issue that boomed out and sold out, which Champions hadn't had in a while. Um, and because of that, Marvel jumped on board with this, and we know what the way they are with late printings now, but this was kind of a little bit when this was just starting out. Um, and they came with issue 19, which is, of course, the first appearance of Amka Aliak. I probably mispronounced that as Snowguard. Um, and then issue 20, and you get a, a double cover, connecting cover, spelling out Snowguard, featuring Snowguard, a uh, beautiful connecting set that has really surpassed the first appearance of first print um, at this point in pricing. So it's one to be on the lookout for. But it's often one I will find, um, like, issue 20, uh, in, in a box and not issue 19, but I still grab it every time because they go for more than people realize. And it's easier to put the set together if you've already got one than trying to buy them both at the same time. That is where you're paying upwards of $70. Coming in at number four, this is one of those Marvel events that I liked when it first started off, but didn't like how it ended. But we're talking about Secret Empire, Brave New World number two. Yeah, and this was one I kind of wasn't on board with either. And this is a spinoff mini from a event series. So this is even more kind of off the cuff. But this is, of course, Secret Empire Brave New World number two, which is the first appearance of Ray Sean Lucas as the Patriot. Um, I think this is a major first appearance. Uh, the Patriot has been featured front and center throughout the, all of these champion stories. The Patriot has been featured, specifically this version of the Patriot has been featured also in the, uh, the Marvel like superhero line that they've sold to young girls and the cartoon that has been, was promoted to young girls. Uh, he was like the one male character on the show. 
Um, and I think that that really kind of shows something. To me, those are like, like the signs I look for when I'm looking for investability. It's where does the corporation see this character in the long run? Plus, I have to bring up that like, you know, uh, it, this character and, and you know, certainly, you know, the, the Falcon is another one um, where you can kind of talk about uh, um, there's a lot that kind of points to with, Kat, with Sam Wilson. You know, he, not that he's getting old, but he's been in the MCU for a while. He's getting older, and then they may at some point look to transition those characters. Um, and I certainly think that Rayshawn Lucas could be a great character to, for Sam Wilson to start getting to know, even within the MCU, even uh, in the short term. Now, if you're talking about this character, another issue that people are going to pay attention to is Captain America, Sam Wilson, number 18, which is, of course, the first appearance of Rayshawn Lucas in and of himself. But we are going to talk about that going forward on this list. A lot of times that's where people get confused with these first appearances, the first appearance of the person versus the first appearance of the character. But here's the thing. We've seen this time and time again, whether it's Spider-Man Carnage. number four, right, Carnage, Carnage with ASM uh, 361 uh, being far more desirable than 344 uh, with Cletus Cassidy and more modern, if you're thinking ASM, uh, you're thinking ASM 4 uh, with Silk versus ASM 1 with Cindy Moon, who becomes Silk. So it's, it, that's kind of one of those things where uh, because of that, yeah, I like Captain Amar, uh, America, Sam Wilson, number 18. I will pick it up for cover price every single time I see it. But I'm more excited about Secret Empire Brave World, number two, for Ray Sean Lucas to become the Patriot because it's the Patriot that I am more speculative on than I am Ray Sean Lucas as an individual. We are now down to that top three and coming at number three. We get that p- new Power Man. And Power Man Shadowland number one. Yeah, Shadowland came out a while ago, right? Those miniseries were popular. Um, And Victor Alvarez was the new Power Man. Um, Victor Alvarez kind of has a little bit of a mystical uh, kind of um, take on this character. And, uh, you know, this was a character that kind of got shelved and put up for a while. But when Champions came back, Victor Alvarez has been front and center. And we mentioned earlier when the top of this show with Bombshell, those characters that kind of get featured on the cover. Power Man is featured predominantly with Bombshell on almost every cover. And because of that, I really look at Power Man as maybe a step above some of the other team members that we've previously mentioned. And uh, this is a first appearance that is widely overlooked, isn't hugely printed. And we've already seen – there is already some – kind of like uh, understanding of Power Man through through Cage, through the Netflix show. Uh, this is certainly more of the superpower take on that. Um, and, you, you know, you can certainly see that in any viewing of this book or a Champions book. But uh, it's a book that I think has a lot of potential. And it's in the number two spot. We get Invincible Iron Man, volume four, number three. that gives us the first Riri Williams as Ironheart. And this is the controversy pick because certainly everybody's going to talk uh, Invincible Iron Man uh, volume. You know, you're going to talk volume two, you're going to talk seven and nine. Um, and we're going to talk about obviously Riri Williams first appearance. And those are iconic, important books, right? And we've talked about them on this show. We've talked about them on probably every show we've got. Yeah. And um, the additional printings for them. Yeah. Uh, so there's no doubt we value those. But think about the conversation we just had about Ray Sean, a.k.a. Sean Lucas, uh, as the Patriot uh, versus Captain America, Sam Wilson, 18. Then the comparisons we made with that, with Cletus Cassidy and Carnage, uh, with Cindy Moon and uh, Silk. And you can go down the list uh, of character names where that kind of applies. And for some reason, there seems to be this massive, massive... um, kind of difference in this situation just this situation where Riri Williams first appearance is Riri Williams is what everyone chases people always say the name Riri Williams and Ironheart is kind of a lagging behind far second uh in the kind of the lexicon uh, uh, or the vocabulary of the average collector and speculator and because of that I think that this book has been largely overlooked in this book she completes her own armor she wears it for the first time She encounters her first villain. She uh, teams up uh, with Pepper Potts. Uh, She gets the nickname Ironheart suggested to her from the Tony AI. Um, So 
you get that moniker, you get that first flight in her own suit, which then would go through alterations and color changes and things like that. But you get that real feminine um, Iron Man suit. She teams with rescue, which is very important um, to kind of like her character and all of that. So, th- so much is going on in this issue. Brian, this is a cover price issue. You look at this issue and go, man, there's so much weight to this issue. Why is this not a thing? And I just think we live in like a key collector, kind of like an app alert. Somebody has to tell you what issues to buy. Kind of, And I'm not telling you to buy this. I'm simply giving you the way that I see the market. Um, but see, we live in this kind of like comic society where people have to tell you what to buy versus this natural investigation. Not that this investigation isn't being done out there. There are some great uh, speculators who are going out and kind of posing these questions. But this is the question that I I really want to pose the market from this list is why is this book not a major, major, major key? Yeah. And it's one thing you're talking about the regular cover for this, but the incentives for this one's already starting to take off, aren't they? Yeah. I mean, the the covers kind of play into the whole, uh, events of the book and i think that some of the kind of smart speculators have already noticed that and especially now being volume four number three these are issues that tend to be lesser ordered there's a big drop off from issue one to issue three so this is definitely one to be on the lookout for and if you can find those incentives anywhere near ratio those are grabs then hitting us at the top spot this week we get that marvel point one that has that sam alexander's nova right yeah, and so we're talking about a lot on this show about the covers and the characters that Marvel has chosen. So I've brought up, um, you know, two characters, Bombshell and Power Man, who are featured on those covers. But there's three characters that are really front and center. Um, and sometimes four if we're, v- Viv Vision is involved. And, and, you know, Camilla Khan, Miles Morales, Sam Alexander. Those are the three characters that they really market heavily as the champions. And if you look at those and you look at those characters, Miles Morales' first appearance, multiple hundreds of dollars. Um, Camilla Khan's first appearance, although it's one of those comics politics ones, it's difficult. Uh, You know, the point one may not be hundreds of dollars raw, but certainly graded it is. And those late printings from Captain Marvel certainly are hundreds of dollars. So you've gotten all that interest there, but for whatever reason, Sam Alexander Nova is still a $20 book. And I think it's largely because another book that we've talked about on this list previously, not this week, but in previous incarnations of this list, which is Nova number one from volume one. The fact that so many people are speculating Richard Ryder to show up in the MCU. And it's not that I don't think Richard Ryder's going to show up in the MCU. It's just that I cannot believe they're putting so much energy and effort into Sam Alexander just for Richard Ryder to ultimately be the Nova that gets most of the spotlight and attention uh, in the cinematic universe. I do think Richard Ryder will be there, but you could be sort of like a, uh, a veteran could kind be of Hank Pym to Scott Lang type thing. Yeah. Yeah. Ex- that's exactly a great point. Um, so I do think you, you could end up with some version like that. I just, I can't believe they're putting Sam Alexander in such a predominant spot in every champions book, every volume that's come out so far in all of the outlawed marketing, in all of the marketing involving these characters, it's always Camilla Khan, Miles Morales, and Sam Alexander. And for that reason, I really feel like Sam Alexander is getting massively, massively overlooked. Um, now, he's not a female, and he's one of the few characters, if not the only character, that's not a person of color. And, may, you know, I know that a lot of people are speculating on some of these characters for those various reasons, but... Uh, and it's tough because some of the characters that are the second version of this or the third version of this, they kind of have a little less heat um, than others. But, uh, you know, this is one I would say, to me, it just screams undervalued. Undervalued all the way. Cover A, the incentives. Um, just, I, I've never understood why this book hasn't quite hit that next level. And this is one you may not want to wait to react to because all it would take is if you believe in the champions and you're already buying these other champions characters, any sort of announcement is going to spike this book insanely. Yeah. Announcement. And then especially casting news of some sort. Oh yeah. So there it is guys. There's 10 books this week and they're all champions theme. We give you great champions books that some people aren't even picking up. We think they're good to add to your collection. That's why we have them on the list this week. Let us know what you guys think. Let us know what books you guys are picking up. There's other champion books out there as well. Let us know which ones you guys are picking up. But that is our top 10. This is Brian and Jack with Some Men's Comics. We'll see you guys in the next video.